Hi, this is Lanner Smith from Sense Memory, and it's Friday night, time for another cocktail and a perfume review. Now, tonight's cocktail is from the 1930s, created in a very famous restaurant called the Brown Derby. This cocktail is called the Brown Derby, and it's created with two ounces of bourbon, a half ounce of honey syrup, and a half ounce of pineapple juice. And the Brown Derby was a very famous restaurant in Hollywood on Vine. There was one in Beverly Hills too, but the one I remember was on Vine Street in Hollywood. And it's a restaurant that you may remember from the I Love Lucy episode, where Lucy, Ethel, and Fred go to the Brown Derby to spot movie stars. That wonderful scene where Lucy gets into a lot of trouble with a plate of spaghetti and William Holden. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful memory for all of us who remember those great days of early television and uh, Lucy, and those of us who remember what Hollywood was like in those days and the great Brown Derby, which is no longer there. So stay tuned and stay with me for a wonderful, wonderful review of something I know you're waiting to hear about. Cheers. The Brown Derby was a wonderful restaurant in Hollywood, and I got to go to it just once in my early 20s before it closed. And I had a great lunch there, great round leather banquettes, the pictures on the walls of all the movie stars, including one of Jimmy Durante with a nose so long it went from one frame into the frame of the next picture. It was a wonderful restaurant, great food, and they were known for their, uh, their a Cobb salad, which is what I had because it was so famous for it. So, the Brown Derby is a great golden memory of mine. So, I know you've been waiting since Monday. I teased you immersively, unmercifully, and so I can't leave you in suspense any longer. We're going to find out what's in the Hermes bag. This is a really special fragrance, and a lot of you had many guesses of what it could possibly be. And unfortunately, you're all wrong. So let's take a look and see which one of the Hermes fragrances I bought. Here is the packaging. Oh, there's the receipt. And here is the, it's wrapped, of course, in, in um, paper. And here we have the box. And I um, really enjoyed my visit to the Hermes boutique, the new boutique at Bloomingdale's here in San Francisco, and as I mentioned before, I had great assistance from from Amber, who is the rep there for the, for the House of Hermes. Um, and this particular fragrance really caught my attention because it's a classic, a classic from the 1950s, and in fact, it was the very first Hermes ever made. And that, you can see, is Eau de Hermes. Beautiful, beautiful bottle. Now, a little bit about this particular, this particular fragrance. It was created in 1951 by the nose Edmund Raditzka, and he's known for uh, such fragrances as Diorama, Eau Sauvage, and uh, a recently, as recent as 2000, the year 2000, uh, Les Parfums de Therese for Frederick Mall. Now, how this came to be was um, the House of... Hermes was interested in creating a perfume around 1951, and they contacted him, and he had just done uh, Diorama for D Dior, and that was a fruity chifra, which um, uh, is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. So they were quite impressed, and they, um, they approached him about making their very first signature scent, their house scent. And this is for men and for women. That was uh, something they wanted, something that is unisex, that could be worn by everyone. So he came up with this beautiful, beautiful O, uh, which um, uh, 
would symbolize for them the luxury of the house, the great house that created began in the 1800s creating saddles and harnesses and moved into um, scarves and all kinds of wonderful, wonderful things uh, that Hermes is famous for. So he came up with this great, great scent. Now, it is a leather scent, and that, of course, that fits perfectly with the house. And what his inspiration was, was the inside of an Hermes leather bag. They're very famous for their bags, including the Kelly bag, which was made famous by Grace Kelly. And he he wanted the, the um, essence of what one of those bags smells like when you first open it, open it up. It, you get this great leather aroma. When the perfume first came out in 1951, uh, it was sold only at their uh, store in Paris, and each bottle of perfume, the bottle was a specially made, a specially created crystal bottle that was inspired, its shape was inspired by the old uh, carriage lanterns, and even the modern bottle kind of has that that shape of a carriage lantern with the black top and it kind of comes down like this, like an old carriage lamp on the, either side of the carriages used to be. Um, and this wonderful bottle was inscribed or in, etched into it the name of the perfume and um, it then was presented in a, in a beautiful, beautiful packaging, making it very, very special. Uh, they no longer do that, but um, it was, can you imagine, uh, getting a, a bottle of perfume that way. Just, uh, just amazing. The bottle today is very beautiful. Let's take a look at it up close so you can see. There's the, the famous Hermes uh, logo. And they're known for their use of orange in their in their uh, shopping bags, in their boxes. And it really is a beautiful, beautifully made bottle. And there on the bottom, of course, you have all your information. Um, so there it is. It's just really a a little piece of sculptural art. It really is beautiful. Along with the the, the wonderful leather aroma it comes a, a feeling of uh, a notes of citruses and fruits and spices. So it's different than um, than um, Dior's Dior Homme, which is more lipsticky inside of a purse kind of a thing. This is this could be any kind of a leather bag, really, be it a man's bag or a woman's bag, with those wonderful citrus and fruity smells in there also. So, a little bit more about this perfume. The main accords that you get from it are leather, aromatic, woody, warm, spicy, fresh, spicy, and smoky. Now, I've worn it before. Uh, I got a little sample to, to test out, and it is really unique. Some people find it a little dirty uh, or a little skanky, but I didn't find it that way at all. Let's just spray it here. It is a classic. It is considered one of the fragrances of the 20th century, one of the great fragrances of the 20th century. And it, it is so incredibly beautiful. There is a, a great um, kind of wafting, floating, animalistic uh, undertow to this particular fragrance that really sets it apart from a lot of fragrances of, of today. Um, the, the top notes are cinnamon, lavender, bergamot, clover, and cardamom. And the, and the cinnamon is right there in the opening, along with the lavender. It's really an interesting combination of cinnamon and lavender. A little bit of bergamot, but I don't get any clover at all. Not that, um, it, it's probably there, but clover is such a delicate, delicate note that it certainly is overpowered by, by the lavender and the cinnamon. Now, the mid notes are tonka bean, vanilla, jasmine, and bourbon geranium. Bourbon geranium is the most expensive geranium. Uh, uh, the oil that they, they um, extract from this particular geranium flower is the most expensive on the market. And it really is, it's there. It is there and so beautiful. If you like geranium and you like leather, this is your scent. It really is amazing. The bottom notes, which will be coming up later for me, but don't show up right now, are birch, leather, sandalwood, and cedar. And those just give it a great backbone, a great classic backbone. It is an exceptional scent, and since it's my first Hermes, I thought 
why not start with the very first one made and explore the line from there out? So those are my first impressions uh, after a week of wearing it, and I'm just really happy that I got this particular fragrance, a classic that will be in my collection for a long, long time. This is Lanier Smith from Sense Memory saying, remember, wear what you love and not what they say you should like.